When optimizing trading strategies, the default option is often to test every single combination of parameters, commonly known as grid search or brute forcing, and you can see an example of it on screen here. Iterating over three parameters with 30 or 40 options each, or about 40,000 backtests total, with the color of each cell representing the sharp ratio for an individual backtest. This method scales poorly the more combinations that you have. As you can see on screen, even with a handful of parameters and 20 options each, you're quickly into the millions of backtests to perform a full grid search. And you'll have to repeat this process for every small change you make to your strategy in the future. Another problem is that not all parameters are equally important and worth exploring. Grid search will waste time tuning a parameter that doesn't actually affect your final performance. Based on those 40,000 backtests that I showed earlier, this Optuna dashboard tells us that the slow moving average value has very little importance whereas the RSI threshold seems to account for most of the results of this strategy. An alternative to grid search is to sample a small selection of possible combinations. We're going to investigate two methods. Random sampling, which, as you might imagine, just selects random parameter combinations, and TPE, or the Tree Structured Parson Estimator Algorithm which is the default option with Optuna, the library I'm using to do this analysis. TPE learns from previous trials and attempts to hone in on regions of the parameter space where we had good results and stay away from bad areas. It does this by creating a probability density function for both the good and bad results obtained so far. And for the next trial picks a value where the ratio between the two is high, represented by the green dotted line here. The strategy that we're going to optimize is a simple trend following strategy with a moving average crossover and an RSI threshold. We go long when the RSI is above the threshold and the fast moving average crosses over the slow moving average. We close when we go below the RSI threshold and repeat. I have to use no commission with this strategy or it immediately nukes to zero, but it works as a placeholder to demonstrate our optimization techniques. I ran 50 batches of 200 backtests using random sampling for parameter selection. And each of these bars represents the best sharp ratio achieved in each batch. You'll notice that the majority of batches have a maximum sharp ratio in the top 2% of all of the 40,000 possible combinations that I tested earlier. So with less than 1% of the compute, we're finding a nearly optimal set of parameters. Here's the pie chart showing which percentiles the sharp ratios fall into. And as you can see, every single batch found at least one value in the top 5%. I switched over to TPE and interestingly for 200 sample batches, the results were slightly worse. This threw me off a bit as I genuinely expected TPE to perform better. So I retried the whole thing with 500 samples per batch. And as we can see this time, TPE does perform slightly better in that a higher percentage of studies fall into the top 2%. But looking at the raw data, I'm not convinced that TPE is much better here. In any case, rather than brute forcing every single combination, we've seen that we can run a few hundred trials using random or TPE sampling, and it's almost as good as computing the full grid. We can use some of that extra time we save to run a sensitivity analysis like the one you see on screen. This shows us how the strategy performance changes with small shifts in the input parameters centered around our optimal point. If the generated surface is too spiky, 
that would be an indication that our parameter selection is overfit and not particularly robust. When used in our backtesting pipeline, we could run this analysis four or five times to find a robust set of optimal parameters in just a fraction of the time it takes to run the full grid. Based on my experiments here, I'll be using random sampling mainly to speed up cross-validation. Since it involves repeatedly tuning parameters, testing only a small random sample cuts runtime drastically. And as we've seen, we can still find optimal tunings. I'll also use it in backtests that are slow or involve a large parameter space. And as a quick sanity check during development to see how performance shifts as I make changes to the strategy. That being said, grid search still has its place, especially when producing visualizations or thoroughly assessing the relationship between a parameter and the final performance metrics. It's also a useful default when dealing with small parameter spaces or faster running backtests. The experiments in this video were performed using Optuner, backtesting.py, and matplotlib for plotting. As usual, all of the code is available on GitHub, and you can find a link to that in the description below.